it is that time again where I get to share all of my best DIYs of the year. My name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to mi casa. This year was an amazing year. I did so many things in our home that we needed to get done. I shared so many DIYs and I had my very first viral video. I am sharing 21 DIYs to leave you inspired and ready to take on this new year. So in no particular order, here they are. My very first DIY that I'm sharing with you guys are thrifted candlesticks that I made over. These are actually from my most popular video that I uploaded this year. And if you recall, this was the one where I said you might cringe when you see the process, but they ended up turning out absolutely beautiful. With these candlesticks, I took some beads and I wrapped them around the top and bottom portion of the candle holders. And then what I did was I took some spackle and I filled in the areas between the beads to fill them in. And then I kind of carved out those little areas so that you can see the beads come through a little bit more. And then after I was done with that, I painted them and added a kind of a whitewash look to them. And they just turned out so beautiful. I still have those in my stash and I'll be bringing them out again during the spring. For my second DIY, I am going to be sharing my fireplace makeover. Ever since we bought the house, this was on the to-do list and I was able to tackle it this year. One of the things that I didn't like about the fireplace was that the mantle was just too high on the wall and it looked really awkward. So my husband removed the mantle and then he chipped away a few of the rows of those bricks so that we can bring the mantle down. And then he created this beautiful rustic mantle piece that even my daughter got in on the fun and distressed it. We stained it, I painted all the brick white with some lime wash, and then we added a beautiful frame above the fireplace in order to frame out our flat screen TV, which was honestly the best place to put it in our living room room and it completely transformed the space. Before it felt like the fireplace was in the way. That bright orange was just way too harsh on my light walls and it kind of broke up the room and made it feel a little bit awkward. But now since it's a more neutral color and I don't have to have a TV on the side of it, it's actually mounted on top above the mantle. First off, it lifts the eye up, making the room seem taller and there's more flow from one side of the room to the other because there's not that harsh orange brick again in the center of the room. So everything looks bigger, more spacious and brighter in the area. And I have to hand it to my husband. He was a real trooper when doing this makeover with me. And if it wasn't for him, I couldn't have pulled this off. So big props to husbands that help out with the DIYs. And I am going a little bit fast when reviewing all of these DIYs, but if you want to look a little bit further and get a little bit more detail on any one of these particular DIYs that I'm sharing with you all today, I do have a complete list down in my description box that links to the original videos so that you can get more details if you wish to recreate any of these projects on your own. I'll also have a playlist for all of the original videos so that you're just one click away if you wanna see more than one. If you're familiar with the Look For Less Challenge, you will know about my Look For Less dupes. 
This next one was inspired by a Pottery Barn piece of art. I guess you would consider them art. They're more like statues, maybe. <laughs> I found these on the website and I love the way they look. They're, they're so simple and yet they look so elegant. And I decided to tackle this and create my own. And so my husband also helped me with this. He cut down some posts that we kind of had lying around in the yard literally and he cut them down to be a little bit smaller because they were honestly too wide for what I needed them for then I sanded them stained them and I found some discounted ceramic birds at Hobby Lobby and what I did was I just took some black spray paint and spray painted all of them then I took some permanent glue and I adhered them onto the top of those mini posts and it was so simple to recreate. They are too adorable and honestly, I think they look better than the originals. Now this year I decided to take on kind of a new craft and that was actually painting my DIYs. And I'm not talking about spray painting, I am talking about actually artist painting. And I am not very good at it, I'm not. But a lot of you really enjoyed watching me paint and I'll be honest with you, I loved it too. And so I decided to dabble in this. And so for this one, I created a beautiful white flower wreath on this little chalkboard frame that I found. I believe it was Michael's. I simply freehanded the entire thing, inspired by a piece that I had originally seen at Hobby Lobby. And then I finished it off with a little decal in the center that said bloom. And it was perfect on my wooden shelves above my buffet next to my kitchen. The next thing I'm sharing with you all is my dining room makeover, or should I say makeovers with an S because I did this twice this year. In the beginning of the year, I transformed the room that was in the front of my house. That was originally the living room into my dining area because at the time it really worked where we had our living room space, which was in our sunroom. We have a smaller home, so our footprint is a little bit different and it was, it was a beautiful transformation with both new and thrifted items at the time, and it worked really well. However, about halfway throughout the year, we ended up switching our dining room and living room spaces. And at first, I wasn't really happy about where my new dining room was because the sunroom is kind of long and it had a lot of windows and with that really extra big table that I had, it just felt like a conference room until I redid it again. And so just a couple weeks ago, I shared my final dining room reveal, which I think really made that room come together and actually look like a dining room instead of just a sunroom with a table in it with thrifted items, new curtains, a new rug. I was able to kind of anchor the space and I finally was able to create my beautiful basket wall that I had been collecting baskets for for a couple of years now and I finally had enough baskets to put up on the wall including my very favorite wreath of all time which was one of my very first projects 
on my blog and this is beautiful wine cork wreath and I think now it's the star of the show so I love how it came out and I know a lot of you all did too My next project was an American flag map. And this was actually a trash to treasure because this was a cutout from a previous DIY that I made at our last home. We actually left that piece of artwork over there as a gift for the new homeowners. Now I still had the insert for this map and I didn't want it to go to waste. So what I did was I repaired all of the little drill holes where I had to insert the jigsaw in order to cut it out. I sanded everything down on all the edges. Then I created some stripes with some contact paper and a stencil for the stars. And what I did was I stained it darker than the rest of the map. After that, I kind of sealed everything, then added a couple of Dollar Tree frames on the back so I can hang it up. And that was it. I was able to create an entire new piece of artwork with what was left over from my previous DIY. And it did not go to waste and it looks absolutely stunning. The next DIY are some cushion covers that I created for my living room. Now this was inspired by some cushions that I had originally seen on Ballard Designs. And I had purchased this purse at a local thrift store. Remember that purse, the one where I found a $100 bill and a syringe inside of it? Oh my gosh, that was crazy, right? I wanted to transform it into something else and I actually created several DIYs out of this purse. My favorite though were these cushions because I just think they look so high-end and so chic. And basically I used part of the leather in order to create a centerpiece for the cushions. And then I took some of the trim work from the purse and added it to the center of the leather piece to give it a little bit more detail. I paired that leather with some khaki fabric that I already had on hand and honestly the end result was just super chic. They look professional like you would have bought them at a store and I use those on a regular basis. The next one is pretty simple, but sometimes DIYs that are really nice don't have to be so complicated. And these were in another very popular video from this year. So I thought I would include these in here because the main thing that I shared here was that it's really great to combine two different types of rope to get yourself a different kind of look when using rope on your DIYs. And these are perfect for vase filling, tray filling, basket filling as you see in this video. And I love how they came out and while they were so simple, they have a, such a huge impact when you see them in a nice vignette in your home. Now let me tell you something, if you enjoy rope DIYs, the queen of rope DIYs is my dear friend Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses. She comes up with some of the best ideas for rope DIYs and is constantly inspiring me to do more with rope. And as a matter of fact, she is also sharing her top DIY videos right now on her channel. So once you're done with this one, make sure you head on over to her channel so that you can see what her top DIYs for the year are. And I will have her link in my description box so you can hop on over when you're done with this one. 
my next one is my master bedroom makeover and I was really looking forward to this. Our master bedroom was seriously lacking and honestly we hadn't done anything to it since we moved in. We basically just plopped the furniture in the room and called it a day because we had too many other things to worry about when fixing our home. So when I got the opportunity to fix this, I jumped on it. I first started by changing the wall color, making it something a little bit more moody. And we brought the color up the walls so that the ceilings would seem a little bit higher. We changed out the light fixture. We removed the big armoire from the room and actually created a small seating area because it seemed a little bit furniture heavy. And then I began to work on my brick wall and I shared exactly the process from start to finish, how to install these brick walls so that it looks real and not just a panel. I share how we hid the seams and how I painted it over to give it a different look. A lot of people do schmear on these brick panels and that looks beautiful, but I wanted something totally different from what you might have seen already done. And I love how it turned out. The best thing about this is that my house is actually brick on the outside. So it makes sense to have a brick wall on an exterior wall of my home. It doesn't look like it's out of place or just kind of you know, put in there. And I love the texture and the contrast that it creates in the rest of the room. We kept all the furniture the same just because of budget purposes, only making little changes here and there. And I absolutely love coming to my master bedroom at the end of the day to rest. Honestly, you don't have to do so many things in order to create a huge impact in a room, but adding an accent wall like this really does make a difference in your space. And this is something that I was really proud of. And again, my husband was a big time helper in this project. And it was so nice to have him by my side helping me fix this space. next one is another dupe and it's a Pottery Barn inspired artisan vase. I had picked up a vase from my local thrift store and I love the silhouette and it was in great condition but I didn't like the way it looked on the outside. I had been inspired by those beautiful stone looking artisan vases from high-end stores and I wanted to really try my own take on it. So I began with some joint compound that we had left over from working in the house and I just began smearing it all over. After the joint compound had dry, I sanded it smooth and then I began to just see what colors would look good on it by painting light strokes throughout it, adding a little bit of contrast with lighter and darker colors and distressing it a little bit in different ways so that it looked like it was an aged vase. The great thing about this is that it's completely versatile and you can add as much color or as little color as you want. And honestly, it's just completely up to you and your style on how you want to customize this for your home. But I absolutely love how this one when it turned out. The next DIY is from the Mystery Box Challenge. If you've been here a while, you know what that is. It's hosted by my dear friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. And this DIY happened to be from a garland that she sent to me in her mystery box for me. And the garland was actually one that said home and it was in four little panels. And I thought it would be great to take those four little panels that had grooves in them to make them look kind of like mini shiplap and create a little crate for a topiary. I painted the little panels, glued them together, used some popsicle sticks to add that crate look on the exterior of them with foam, a round dowel, and a foam ball and some greenery that I had on hand. I just kind of put everything together so that I can create a topiary. I added a little bow to it and some moss to the bottom of it. And you would never guess that that started off as a cute little garland. The 
Halloween project was out of necessity. <laughs> Our house didn't come with a pantry. Originally, this space was really disgusting. This used to be the laundry room, and when we first bought this house, this area was just a hazard to be in. It was pretty gross. We temporarily fixed it up and made it into a laundry room for us as well, so that we can use it, one that was clean. We had shelves and we had a cabinet in there, but when we had to replumb the entire house, we decided that we would move the laundry room down to the basement and I have not regretted it ever since. Then I had this space that I needed to do something with and I thought it would be the perfect place to add a pantry. And that is what we did. I showed my husband what I wanted to do and he helped create this beautiful space. We added several shelves to the walls, shiplap to the back, cabinets on the bottom and a small countertop so that we can put things on. And it took a couple of weekends to all put together, but it was completely worth it. Transferring everything became a family affair. All of the kids helped out with that. And then I ended up buying bins and crates and little baskets so that I can put everything together nice and organized and I labeled everything with my Cricut and it all turned out perfect in the end. And let me tell you something, it has been so great having a pantry that large and that open for me to use every day. If you've been enjoying this video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can become part of the familia and continue getting more DIYs and inspiration like this. This next one is a really cute side table that I got for free. It was a free porch pickup. This little side table can fold up and be used as a tray and I just thought it would be great to have something different for my living room space. I decided to make it a dual toned side table so what I did was I painted the bottom legs with a gray and then I painted the tray portion with a white. Then I added some grass cloth contact paper that I found on Amazon and I used it for the bottom of the tray and that is all it took to transform this and it looks so fresh and brightens up the space and you would never know that I had gotten that piece for absolutely free. Alright, nautical decor, let's talk about it. It's kind of cheesy. I am not the kind of girl that likes to see netting and fish on my walls. I'm not. So I was, I was very particular when creating some nautical inspired decor for my home. I love the beach. We love going there every year and I was inspired by our trip but I wanted to create something that I actually wanted in my home. And using some things that I already had on hand, I was able to create the most adorable boat. Using some pieces of wood that I had gotten from Hobby Lobby that didn't work out for another project, I glued two of them together because alone they were just too short. Then I cut off the end pieces to give it that boat look. I added a dowel to the center and I sewed up some little sails from some scrap fabric that I had on hand with a couple of hooks and some twine string. I was able to put it all together and put it on my entrance sideboard that I had in my home. And I absolutely love how it turned out. I can see a vignette of these in like a home in the Hamptons, all different sizes with a different color fabrics. So yeah, I was really proud of this little boat. So 
So this next one is a look for less challenge DIY that I created and it's another Pottery Barn inspired dupe. This one was these beautiful artisan circular candle holders that I wanted to take on. And I found these beautiful hoops online on Amazon that were a little bit more substantial than your embroidery hoop because most of the time those are too thin. And I found these and they were perfect. And then using things that I had already on hand in my craft stash, I put everything together, added some paint, and I was able to create these for so cheap versus those really expensive ones that you saw online. And I thought this was one of my best dupes yet. So earlier this year, I shared that my husband was helping me create a YouTube studio in the basement. So I had a better place to create my videos. And one thing that I really wanted was a brand new table to do my crafts on just because the one that I had was kind of small and it was just uncomfortable to work on it. So I found this desk on Facebook Marketplace and it was absolutely free. My husband was a little bit hesitant to pick it up, I will say, but he did. And it was just a solid piece of desk. We started off by sanding the top off. It had like a really kind of gross varnish on it and it was kind of sticky <laughs> and removing it took quite a bit of work. But my husband sanded it down to the bare wood and then I came in and filled in several areas because there were some holes from the knots just naturally made from the wood. And then we repaired the drawers because they were falling apart, unfortunately. After we glued them and nailed them together, I painted everything and I sealed the top of the desk with some polycrylic to make sure, you know, anything that I did on the tabletop would not affect the finish. I added new hardware and honestly, I was so happy with how this turned out because it's like I said, it's a solid piece of furniture and it gives me so much more surface space to do my DIYs. I'm able to spread out a little bit more and it has been a wonderful surface to work on. So that was an amazing, absolutely free find on Facebook Marketplace. Came something unexpected the need for a homeschool room many of you know that it was not our intention to homeschool but this year the opportunity presented itself and we had to go ahead and take it on and it has been a decision that we have not regretted we started off by doing homeschool in the dining room but honestly it just was not ideal so I ended up turning the landing area on the top of the stairs into our homeschool nook since this was something that was not originally in our plans, I really wanted to transform this in a really small budget. So I focused on using things that I had on hand, only buying what was necessary, and using things from like Facebook Marketplace that were at a great price. The table that I used to use in my craft room is now the table that my kids use to study on. I had a bench that was downstairs and barely used that is now part of our reading nook. The curtains were the ones that I had used in my living room where I shared my Decorate With Me video. I recently changed those out for Christmas, so I went ahead and moved these up here. With a fresh coat of paint, new trim around the windows to match the rest in our house, and little details here and there, along with a new rug to anchor the space. In addition, I painted a couple of bookcases that I found for only $10 on Facebook Marketplace, added a mirror that I had in the basement, and everything just came together so well. The kids love it. I love it. It's a great space to have. And at the end of the day, we don't have to put absolutely everything away to have a dinner. So that's a big bonus.
you know that I love to sew and I also love very practical DIYs. And this one is no exception. This little appliance cover that says Reposteria, which by the way means bakery in Spanish, was made from some scrap fabric that I had on hand. I had previously shared a farmhouse little tablecloth with you all that I made in my last house. Unfortunately, that tablecloth shrunk after I washed it and I sold the table. So I had the fabric left over. I cut it up and I decided to reuse it for this really cute appliance cover to hide my ugly little toaster oven on top of my counter. And it was so simple to put together. All I had to do was drape it over the appliance to get the measurements that I needed. And then I trimmed off the excess, added the ruffle, and then I created a stencil on my Cricut Design Studio so that I can add the word Reposteria on it. It looks great, it's holding up, and it's hiding that little appliance in the corner. And I absolutely love how simple it was and yet how useful this DIY was. This other DIY was in my coastal video. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I combined a Dollar Tree mirror with a thrifted frame and it turned out to be something absolutely beautiful together. So what I did was I glued this mirror onto the frame. Then I covered up the mirror portion and then I spray painted everything in white. After that was dry, I took some square dowels, I cut them down and I stained them to match the exterior of that frame. And then I adhered it to the top of it to give it a more of a three-dimensional look. And not only did it look nice and coastal because it was bright and white and it had that wood color to it, but it was just a classic piece that came together so beautifully. And this can be seen in like a bedroom, a bathroom. I mean, there's so many options for it. And with different styles of these little mirrors at like Dollar Tree, you can really create a beautiful set with just placing it on a square little frame. It definitely turned out much better than I had expected. All right, this one's another mystery box challenge. And I love this one because the box was sent to me from my friend Natalie over at Design to the Nines. For this mystery box challenge, we had to send each other an unfinished item that we had previously worked on. Natalie had this little pumpkin that she wrote thankful on. And I decided to paint it over to match my color scheme. And she had also sent me this brown rope from like the hardware section because this box was actually from Walmart. So I took that rope and wrapped it around this little box that I had left over in my stash. Then I had another pumpkin that I had bought that I still hadn't done anything. And in that same box, Natalie gave me like a curtain rod like a mini curtain rod as one of my challenge items. So I used the curtain rod to literally stab through both pumpkins to um, stack them on top of each other and then put it in some foam inside of that basket that I created to make a topiary out of it. With a little bit of greenery and a little bit of gold paint, it all came together. And you would have never guessed that this came from, you know, an unfinished pumpkin, some rope from the hardware section and a curtain rod. It ended up looking absolutely beautiful and it was a substantially large piece of decor. So I was really happy with that topiary. My final DIY that I'm sharing with you guys is this Kirkland's Christmas art dupe. Kirkland's has beautiful pieces of art that you can put up for the holidays. And I found this one online and I thought I could recreate it since I was, you know, dabbling in painting. So I took some poster board from the Dollar Tree, mixed some paint um, for the backdrop and painted the entire thing in that dark color. Then I created a white vinyl decal in Cricut Design Studio. I adhered it on to the poster board and then I began to paint the florals all around the words, taking inspiration from that original piece. And all I had to do was hang it in a frame that I already had stashed away in my closet. And it 
didn't really cost me anything because I already had everything. And I think it turned out really well and looks just as good as the original piece. So I was really happy with that one, especially since I was able to combine, you know, a really pretty decal design along with some original paintwork that I had created myself. And that is it. That is the top 21 DIYs of this year. Let me know if you saw any of your favorite ones in the comments below. Thank you all so much for being here and supporting my channel. All these DIYs could not have been done without you all being here cheering me on. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are amazing and I am truly grateful for each and every one of you. Next year is gonna be even more amazing. We have big plans for next year and I cannot wait to share what those are with you. Don't forget to hit up Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses. I hope you are doing well and I will see you back here with my next home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.